Okay, I wanted to uh, show you something. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, do my best here, for one. I don't know if this is going to work because um, we were trying to get this to work on Windows 7 and it didn't work on Windows 7. This is an old program that runs on... It was originally designed, I think, for like 95, 98 era. Um, maybe even like Windows ME era, somewhere around there, or Windows NT. Not exactly sure. Either way, um, this is something that we were hoping to get it to work on Windows 7. It's not going to work on Windows 7, so we grabbed an old XP machine. And we've got this, um, you know, CD that it runs off of. And now, the software needs to have the CD run all the time. One of the issues they're running into is then, of course, then you burn up CD-ROMs because the disk needs to be in at all times. So we're trying to figure out a way to resolve this. Well, there's one way that I know um, that work, works really well, and that is... So there's a program called Magic Disk. Um, we'll install Magic Disk. Now, Magic Disk I know works really well. So we'll get this part installed. I know this works. This isn't the issue. Um, so we'll put the disk in. I just don't know if the software is going to work with XP. Um, we're, I'm advised that it works with XP. Um, but when we tried to get it to work on 7, it wouldn't work. We tried 7 in compatibility mode. We ran 732-bit all the way in compatibility, com compatibility mode all the way back to Windows 95, and it never worked. I tried to strip everything down. I tried, you know, stripping the graphics down. We tried running it with Quadro graphics, um, Intel graphics. We tried everything. And we just couldn't get it to work. So, with Magic Discs, you just go in here. You're going to mount the drive. Actually, I take that back. That's to mount uh, an image. We're not mounting an image right now. So, we're going to make an image because we don't have one. Okay. So, you're going to tell it to make an image. Obviously, it's going to automatically default to the only CD-ROM that's on this. If you have more than one CD-ROM, then you would select whichever CD-ROM has the correct disk. You want to select the location you want this to be saved to um, and name it because it's not going to auto-name it. Um, and then you can password protect it if you don't want anybody else to use it. I recommend no, but you can if you want. Um, then it's going to make an image. Now this is not going to make an ISO image, this is going to make a UIF image. Now you can decompress the UIF to make an ISO. Shouldn't take too long, it's just a 700 meg CD. Now this will work if you have a similar program that you know requires that the disk be in at all times then you can use the same technique in Windows 7 using Magic Disk um, and it'll work just the same with Windows 7 it's just this particular software is not 7 compatible. Um, we tried everything under the sun to get it to work. I even tried to find this particular software 
in a newer format to see if maybe we could just purchase the software um you know to be compatible with 7 uh, or pat you know something compatible with like 10 or 8 so that we don't have to worry about you know losing the uh combat the end of life with windows 7 coming in january and this particular software is just not available anymore at all there's other software like it um that is currently available that is definitely more advanced and probably could be used you know instead of but you know this particular individual likes this software is currently used to using this software and has been using this software so everything that he uses it for um, all the files are you know built with this software and so we don't want to change something that you know is currently working and you know this isn't something that's uncommon with you know some of this older software like this uh, especially in this industry and I, you know there's another uh, gentleman that you know his plotter um, will not work with any of the current software and it's not that he doesn't want to get a new plotter he has new plotters that work on his new software but the plotter that he uses to do his particular blueprints will only work with um, the XP or older machines and also the software that he uses for creating his blueprints the software that he actually finds working best for the stuff that he builds actually works better with Windows XP and with that particular software so we've just been keeping him running on you know Windows um, XP and keeping these machines alive and you know when hard drives go out we replace hard drives and you know we're keeping them running on mirrored hard drives so that the uh, issue if a hard drive fails doesn't cause him to be completely down if a hard drive fails well then we just replace the hard drive and rebuild the raid and of course the machine itself um, you know we've got them on a Dell machine that's pretty common so that you know should the machine die then you know they're pretty common so we can find another one okay this there's the possibility that the particular CD-ROM in this machine might be failing because I know when I was trying to load the XP I was having issues reading a disk so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this that's okay it's not going to affect what I'm trying to do because I have actually already created the UIF needed. Um, which isn't going to matter. I had already made a UIF previously on a different machine with the Windows 7. So it doesn't matter. I was actually just doing that to um, basically to to show you guys to try to help out. But so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over. Essentially, this is the exact same thing. Um, and make sure that that's not. <laughs> It did not successfully make it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because that is a bad UIF. Um, we're going to go ahead and copy the new UIF over. That's how you would actually create it using the software, though. Normally it does work. Like I said, I know this CD ROM, this particular CD ROM, I think is either having issues or the lens needs to be cleaned. I will fix that later. Um, I just wanted to get this loaded, get this tested, see if this is going to work first. And if it is going to work, then we'll go ahead and clean up this machine and uh, see if this is going to work for the customer and then go from there. But I wanted to, you know, show this video and uh, try to help people that might be having 
issues where they need to leave a disc in but don't want to leave the disc in. And this even works if you want to, say, play DVDs in a computer but you don't want to have the DVD. Um, so you would basically create the UIF and then, so you go, let's see if I can show you a little bit better. This bottom right corner, you're going to right click. See if I can get this to focus a little bit better. I'm going to turn this light off. I don't know how well that's going to... Nope. Not changing things. Okay, well, all right. So down on the bottom right by the clock, you're going to have an icon for a magic disc. It's a little hand holding a CD. You're going to right click on it. It's going to bring you up the menu. On that menu, top, it's going to say virtual CD-ROM, set number of drive, unmount all drive, make the image, compress ISO, decompress UIF image, options, help, how to, magic disc homepage, um, Magic ISO homepage, Magic Disk support about an exit. Okay, there's a help that helps you to do all this. So if you need help, just go to Magic Disk and then, you know, once you install it, you can click on help or how to and it's going to walk you through how to do all this. But, so right here you would go over to uh, where it says no media and it's going to give you an option. These options are mount, unmount, edit, burn, um, or to change the drive letter so if you know you need it to say V drive D or you know whatever you can change the drive letter to whatever you want so you're gonna mount the UIF so you can browse to whatever wherever it's at now you can also mount the uh, ISOs but in this case it's better to mount the UIF it actually works a little bit better if you do so and you hit open and now it's going to act as if the CD is actually in the ROM and I can show you we'll go ahead and take the CD out of the ROM okay so there's no CD in the ROM we will go to my computer and you're gonna see a CD drive that looks like it has a disk in it again no disk and it looks like there's the software in a CD-ROM. So we will go through um, uh, yes, i got to change the display settings for this software. Like I said, this is something that this particular software requires a crazy it requires 16-bit not 32-bit so, yeah. Like I said, this software is old. <laughs> you know it's old when it asks for 16-bit. When it says you need to increase your resolution to 16-bit. <laughs> and it thinks you're running below 16-bit because you're running 32-bit. But so anyhow, um, I just wanted to show you that, you know, how Magic Disk works, how you can mount the disk using Magic Disk and how you can, um, you know, this particular software requires that you have the disk in at all times. And so uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, we got to change the compatibility. So, but um You make sure yeah but anyhow I just wanted to show how that works obviously we're having problems still with getting the software to run um, but I wanted to show how to make that part work so that if you need to you can uh, do so yourself as well going forward and um, 
turn off advanced no nope, I think we should be okay with that let's see if this works hopefully it'll work so I can show you that this is working nope okay well I'm gonna have to do some software diagnostics to see if we can get that working but I did want to show you how that uh, magic ISO works so anyhow if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment um, you know give us a like and uh, subscribe and let us know what you think thanks